Greetings everyone and welcome to our message today. Uh, today uh, I'm giving a tribute to Kenya's third president uh, who rested a few days ago. You know, our third president, Mwai Kibaki. Uh, at the same time, I will be, you know, I'll be sharing on, a con you know, the conviction that I have regarding what Kenya's next president must learn from, you know, our late former president, Mike Kibaki. So I'm joining all patriotic Kenyans you know, from all walks of life in wishing the family of the late president, Mike Kibaki, solace, comfort, and peace uh, at this difficult time when they have just lost their father and their grandfather. And to all Kenyans who loved and, you know, cherished our third president, may God strengthen us all and comfort us and, uh, you know, help us to cope with this. Uh, the truth is that we have lost uh, an important leader, and a great one for that matter. Uh, Mwai Kibaki came to power, you know, in 2002. That's when he assumed the presidency. I was in standard six at that time. And his ascension to power marked a transition from the traditional politics of suppression and personification of the state. And there was a shift to a politics of liberty and freedom, a politics that sought to liberalize our economy and, you know, to really help and permit, uh, you know, the country's economy to, to literally take off. Uh, Mikey Baki trained as an economist, of course, uh, ushered in a revolution when he first came to power. And he made moves to liberalize, uh, you know, the struggling economy of Kenya. And this brought a rapid growth. In this, you know, in our economy, in his first term of office, uh, a new sense of pride and belonging consumed the nation, and industrious Kenyans launched businesses across the country as improved infrastructure opened up new markets. We realized that President Kibaki also introduced free primary education, transforming the lives of more than one million children who would not have otherwise gone to school. His entry in, you know, in state of Nairobi represented a fresh start in the politics of our country and the governance of our country. And I believe that uh, when he, he was being sworn in at Uhuru Park, he made a statement that, you know, he believed that the government existed to serve the people and not the people to serve the government. And you realize that this man, of course, uh, you know, this man's ascension to power was, was, a, was a departure from the normal politics of suppression. Of course, uh, in 2007, uh, Mike Kibaki, while still in power, uh, the country went through a very difficult time of post-election violence. But I choose to look at uh, some of the good things that happened uh, under the leadership of President Kibaki and I've just mentioned some of them. So I'll not focus on the dark season that we had. I choose to applaud him for the achievements that he accomplished as our third president. And I feel that the next president of Kenya needs to be a Kibaki of some sort. Uh, our next president needs to be, you know, needs to bring a certain refreshment, a certain uh, uh, departure from the status quo. I feel that uh, the president that we are voting in in August uh, needs to get some lessons uh, from the presidency of Mike Kibaki. And that's why, that's why, you know, we are saying that they need to signify a departure from the status quo and bring on board freshness, uh, a freshness that the country desperately needs, uh, especially in matters of economic opportunity and in the fight against embezzlement of public funds. I believe that our next president needs to seize the moment 
and assure every Kenyan that there will be an equal distribution of public resources and opportunity. They must set the country on a growth trajectory. And if we are to talk about unification of Kenyans, then we need to begin with equalizing opportunities, economic opportunities. We need to begin by ensuring that public funds and public resources are uh, stewarded and are taken care of and that it's not a few individuals will be benefiting uh, from the hard-earned resources that belong to Kenyans. And so the next president must, uh, you know, ensure that this is taken care of. They must therefore rise above tribal and regional confines, uh, regional politics. They must become a servant to all Kenyans and a true uh, symbol of national unity. This next president therefore will have a very important assignment, an important uh, duty to unify the country and to open up all parts of the country for opportunity uh, without fear or favor. And I pray that we will see a realization of this, you know, after our 9th August election. Pray that God will give us a leader who will uh, embody uh, the, you know, the characteristics that I have just mentioned. And having said that, we pray for peace and prosperity in the land of Kenya. I want to thank you all for watching this, and may God bless our country. Thank you so much.